Hi, my name is Human Fatemi. I'm a medical director for the EVGCC group, responsible for all the activities of the EV clinics in the Middle East. Infertility affects approximately 15 to 20 percent of the world population. Uh, there is a slight difference in geography infertility, so we cannot say that in each part of the world we have the same prevalence of infertility. But what we know is that there are differences in cause of infertility. In fact, we know that approximately 10 to 30 percent of the cases we have a problem with a couple, which means both of them are affected as a cause of infertility. We also know that approximately 30 to 40 percent of the cases the male is the primary cause, 30 to 40 percent it's a female, and 10 percent we call it idiopathic infertility, which means we don't know where is the cause. But also, I will come back to that point. The fact that we don't know, it doesn't mean that it, there is no reason for infertility. Speaking of male infertility, obviously it's the sperm quality which is important. The sperm has several factors that we have to look at. Primarily, it's a concentration, it's a number of the sperm being present. But the number alone is not sufficient. We need also mobility. The sperm has to move. The sperm has to migrate a long distance to fertilize the oocyte. So therefore, the mobility of the sperm is also crucial. So we have the concentration and number being important. We have the concentration and the mobility being important. Last but not least is the shape, the morphology of the sperm, which is important. Imagine you have a high concentration, high density of the sperm. They have a rapid movement, they reach the oocyte easily, but prior being able to enter and fertilize the oocyte, it's also the morphology, the shape of the sperm, which is important. And that is called the morphology. So we have three crucial factors which are important for the sperm quality. Concentration, mobility and morphology being the shape. Now there are various methods of evaluating the sperm and there are various causes why a sperm should not be of good quality. Of course, it's always, always multifactorial. You cannot say there is only one reason that the sperm is not of good quality. We know that lifestyle, stress has a negative impact. We know smoking has a huge negative impact on mobility of the sperm. But also obesity, for example. Males who are extremely obese, they produce a lot of female hormones. And these female hormones have again a negative impact on the sperm quality. Of course, we should not neglect a genetic factor because also genetic predisposition can have an impact on the sperm quality. Having said that, this is the major causes of male infertility. On the other side, there are in different parts of the world different reasons of having a low sperm count. Today, we also know that, for example, lack of vitamin D seem to have also an impact on the sperm production. Now, having worked in the region, in, in the GCC countries, we have found out that the prevalence of male infertility is slightly lower than the prevalence of female infertility. It seems that here we are having a higher prevalence of female infertility. Globally spoken, we know that female infertility is primarily linked to the age of the woman. If you take a look at this graph, you will see that with increasing the age, the quality but also the quantity of the oocytes decreases. Now when we speak about quality, we are speaking about genetic information of the oocytes. And as you can see, already from the age of 25, 26, 27, the quality and quantity of the oocytes starts to decrease. And in fact, a patient who passes the age of 35, 36, we see a significant drop in the chances of becoming pregnant. If you take a look at these data published from German IVF register, you see that from the age of 35, we have a significant drop in the pregnancy rate. Why is that? It's not only because the quantity of the oocytes is decreasing, it's also because the genetic information of the oocytes is decreasing. And if you go one step further and you would start checking the genetic information of the oocytes and of the embryo obviously, you will see that even at the age of less than 35, take a patient who is 31, 32, you have approximately 
60% of the embryos being genetically abnormal. And if you go one step further and look to a patient who is, let's say, 44, 45, almost 95% of the embryos are genetically abnormal. Now, this decrease in pregnancy rate going parallel with the age, it is very extreme with women. And unfortunately, we think because women, they keep themselves young, they do a lot of sports, they, uh, at the age of 36, 37, they look like someone who's 29, and they think also oh, the quality of the old sites is the same, but that's not true. This is something that we cannot visualize, but this change in genetic expression of the old sites, it changes with age. And if a patient passes the age of 35, 36, we have a significant increase of the genetic information and the effects of the genetic information of the oocytes. In fact, if you do a genetic testing on the embryos prior transferring them, you will see that there is no difference in outcome once you have a genetic normal embryo. As you can see here in this slide, you can completely eliminate the negative impact of the age if you have a genetic normal embryo that you transfer. It means that if you transfer an embryo of a patient who is, let's say, 35, or you transfer an embryo of a patient who is 42, once you have a genetic normal embryo, the chances of becoming pregnant is absolutely equal. Now, these changes of oocyte quality, it seems also to be related to the place where you live. Now, we have found out that in areas where you have a high rate of parental consanguinity, which means where the parents marry together, that their offsprings, the first generation daughters, have a higher risk of having a reduced number of eggs and more genetically abnormal eggs at a very young age. Of, of, at a very young age. Which means that at the age of 25, they might have the number and quality of eggs of a woman who would be 42, 43. This is one point specifically present in the Middle East because we have a high rate of marriage within the family. Secondly, it seems more and more the huge impact of vitamin D deficiency. Due to the lifestyle being present in the region, we know that up to 100% of women living in these areas have a high rate of vitamin D deficiency. And it seems that vitamin D is not only important for the bones as we have thought initially, it plays also a crucial role in the human fertility, specifically in the female infertility. Last but not least, we should also not neglect the impact of obesity on reproductive outcome. Obesity has an impact on the receptivity of the womb, but it also has an impact on quality and genetic expression of the oocyte. And we know that patients who are becoming more obese have a lower rate of success in IVF cycles, but also they have a higher rate of losing the baby once they become pregnant. They have a higher rate of miscarriage, they have a higher rate of having diabetics once they're pregnant, and higher rate of premature delivery, and so on. So having said that, it seems that we have something which is related to geography, the place where you live, and also the causes of your infertility. Now last but not least is the 10% patients who we defined as idiopathic infertility. Today, we have various methods of evaluating in detail the genetic information of the embryo, but not only the embryo, because we also know that the uterus, that's the place where the embryo is being implanted, varies on a daily basis. And today, we have genetic tools in our hands to determine exactly when the uterus is receptive for an embryo which is genetically normal to be put in. So once we are going ahead, in fertility treatment, it's not only oocytes, hormones, and embryos, it's going more and more towards a point of having a better understanding of a genetic expression of the endometrium, of the uterus, but of course also of the embryo. Once they have been synchronized together, we will have a successful pregnancy.